things happening here at Church of the Cross. And again, just thank you for your heart to reach the community and really make a difference. Well, we are in week two of our new series that we started last week called Small Changes, Big Differences. And, and in this uh, series, we're talking about how small changes can, can make a huge impact in our life. And, you know, so often we go into this time of year, uh, you know, with these major resolutions and these huge goals, and we want big change, and we want it now. But, but many times taking a new direction uh, in life has a lot more to do with the little things. And, and that's really what this series is about. And for us not to underestimate the small changes uh, that we can make that will have a huge impact and make big differences in our life. And, and last week we talked about how uh, just embracing the simple truth that God is for you and, and how just believing that simple truth uh, will actually transform your life and will help you see things uh, from a different perspective and interpret things in life differently. And we looked at that one passage in Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you uh, hope and a future. And then we looked at three uh, huge game changers that come from really grasping that truth and, and allowing it to really sink in your spirit. The first one is when we realize that God's for us, we no longer run from God, but we run to God. We don't hide from God. And, um, <clears throat> you know, when we don't trust God and we don't trust his character, we do exactly what Adam did in the Garden of Eden when he sinned. What did he do? He hid, he hid from God. And when you understand that God loves you unconditionally, you won't hide from God but you'll actually run to him. And the second thing we talked about last week is when we realize that God's for you, we don't live for God's approval, we live from God's approval. And the Bible says that you were made, you were created to be loved by God and that God knew, knew every stupid, uh, harebrained thing that we were going to do yet he still loves us. And you were made to be an object of God's love, which means God is for you. And then we talked about how the, the third thing is when you realize uh, who uh, he's, uh, um, you know, realizing that God is for you, I should say, you won't fear what happens. When, when those things that come your way, those storms, those trials, those tribulations that come your way, you don't have to cave into it. You don't have to uh, walk in fear because you understand that God is going to take even the most horrible thing in our life and he could bring good out of it. And Romans 8, 28 says this, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I just want to remind you this morning, if you missed a message or, or if you have a friend that could benefit from one of our messages here at Church of the Cross, don't forget that you can go to our, our website and listen to it and, and send the link uh, to your friend. So today I want to look at uh, a simple truth, another simple truth that will make a huge difference in your life if you'll embrace it, embrace it and that is God is with me, that he's not just for you. But he is with us. And Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And when you really believe that and really internalize it, suddenly you have confidence that you don't have to worry about whatever may be happening in your life, that, that not only is God for you, that he's with you, and he's going to work uh, in whatever circumstances to bring good out of it. You know, when I was a, a freshman in high school in Cleveland, I went to a very rough high school. And really through a, a fluke thing, I became friends with literally the toughest guy in high school. And his name was Don. His nickname was Mad Dog because he was actually bad to the bone. And um, I was his friend, not because I was cool, not because I was tough, not because I was part of his inner circle. My best friend's older brother was his best friend. And me and my friend were just two skinny, mouthy, little, little ninth grader wannabes, but these guys were the real deal. And, uh, you know, one day uh, I was in PE class, I'm playing basketball, and uh, a guy on the opposing team, is, he's a big dude, he's part of the football team, he's a senior, and he elbows me in the mouth. And have you ever been in a situation where something comes out of your mouth or you do something that you know immediately when you do it, this is going to end in a really bad way? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I just, I was mouthy back then. I, I said some things, some things come out of my mouth towards that guy. I said some things about him and his mom, and it was not good. <laughs> and all of a sudden, these words came out. I was like, no, come back. 
It's like this is going to end really bad. And before I know it, this guy sucker punched me dead in the face. I saw so many stars, I thought I was in Hollywood. <laughs> but what I did not know was Mad Dog was in the gym. He saw what happened. He ran over. He grabs this guy, throws him against the wall. He said, you touch him again, and I'll kill you. And, you know, from that day forward, I did not have a problem with that guy. And, um, and this is before I had an encounter with Jesus, and he, you know, changed me. But I actually went through that year taunting this guy. I would I'd see that guy in the hallway say, hey, man, Mad Dog said hello, man. How you doing, dude? And all of a sudden, the bullied became the bully. Okay, Mad Dog was the muscle and I was the mouth. And I just, I just harassed this guy. But you know what? I was never bothered by him again. I did not have to fear this guy ever again because I was with Don. I was with Mad Dog. And when we realize that God is with us, all of a sudden, you know what? We don't have to be afraid. The problem with some of us is even though we're committed Christians, we, we have the head knowledge, but it's not really a heart knowledge. And what we need to understand is that, <clears throat> that God's with us has actually changed over time. In the Old Testament, when God said, I'm with you, what well, kind of meant like, I'm for you. I'm on your side. And obviously, that's a good thing, having God on your side. But the Christmas story in the New Testament, Testament which I hopefully we all read during the Christmas season, says that when Jesus came, he was called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh, and God dwelt among us in the person of Jesus. And he wasn't just for us, but he was actually there physically, uh, you know, through, through Jesus Christ. He was here in person. And then it got better. When Jesus died and he rose again, he said, you know what, I'm going to send my spirit, and I'm not just going to be on your side. I'm not going to be uh, just physically present but I'm going to let my spirit dwell within you so that God will never leave you nor, nor forsake you. Wherever you are, God is with you. And you know, when we really grasp that truth that God is with me, and we really internalize that, I want to tell you, it changes everything. I want to give you three huge areas that will make a big impact if you can wrap your mind and just really digest this truth. The first one is this, loneliness. Psalm 25, 16, it says, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. And there may be some lonely people here today, and, and we now have more people on planet Earth than we ever have in the history of mankind, yet there are more lonely people than ever. There's many different reasons or kinds of loneliness. There, there's the loneliness of a, a death of a friend or a spouse. There's the loneliness of, of relocating and having to go to a new school or a new job or a new city that you're living in. There's the loneliness of growing old. There's a loneliness of, of feeling like, like you're not understood. So there's a lot of different reasons for loneliness. You can be lonely in a crowd. Anybody been lonely in a crowd? I have. And we can experience loneliness, and, and, and that's the fact that we're all going to experience at some point. And the Bible says this, that God said the first thing that he didn't like about the world after he created it, God looked at it and said, it is not good for man to be alone. So God doesn't want you and I to be alone, but it's something that all of us are going to face at some point. So what do we do when we have those moments of uncontrolled loneliness? And, and what do we do when we face those situations? Well, we need to recognize God's presence is there. That if you've invited Jesus Christ into your life, he is your constant companion. Hebrews 13, 5 says this, God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. He's our constant companion. Jesus called us his friends. He said, you are my friend. And he's a friend that knows more about you than any other friend that you have. Actually, he knows more about you than you know about yourself. And he understands you. And the Bible says that God is always with us. And so here's the second area. So the first area is, is loneliness. Second area is worries and cares. And remember the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who walked through the fire. And, and God walked through the fire with them. And when they came out, the, the ropes weren't, weren't uh, burned off, uh, or they were burned off, but, but they were unharmed. And some of you may be going through a difficult time right now. Some of you may feel like you're going through the fire. 
Well, we need to remind ourselves. We, can, we may not be able to predict how the problem is going to uh, work its way uh, out or, or what problem we may be faced, but this is what we can be certain of, is that God is going to go through it with us. And we can have confidence of that because God says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Why? Because he's with us. And we can handle it because God's with us. We can even handle death. Psalm 23, verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That kind of confidence doesn't come from self-help books. That doesn't come from psychology. That comes from knowing that God is with each and every one of us. Here's the third thing is temptation. When I'm tempted, when you're tempted, he's ready to, to help us to get through it. He wants to come alongside us. He wants to be our counselor. He wants to be our advisor. 2 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure. That's an encouraging verse. When, when, when God is with you, he will provide a way of escape. When you're tempted, he wants to come alongside us. He wants to be our advisor. He wants to be our counselor. He wants to point us to a way of escape. And this passage really points out a couple of things. First off, it says temptation is common. It's common to every single one of us. All of us are going to face temptation. There's no point in your Christian walk where you arrive and you're not tempted any longer. Not in this life. But he's right there with us when we're tempted. And there's a motivation for me not to give in to it when we know that God is there, when I realize that he is watching. And just realize this. Just paint this picture in your mind. Every time I sin, I'm sinning in front of the throne of God. And the real benefit of God's presence is not only does it bring peace and contentment and joy in our life, but God's presence helps us out. He knows exactly what we're struggling with. He knows exactly what what we're fighting in our minds, and he's pulling for us. He sees the trap that we're getting ready to maybe walk into, and he's already planning an escape if we'll look to him. And it's not going to be by our willpower. It's not going to be by our, uh, you know, our thinking, but it's going to be by his power, and he's promised to help us, and that's good news. No matter what temptation you may face this coming week, whether it's at church or home or on a job, in a neighborhood, whatever, God is there with you. Job 13, 27 says, you, God, keep a close watch on all my paths. The Bible says God sees everything. And it's so much easier to control yourself when you know other people are watching. Have you guys found that out? I'll give you a couple examples. When you were in high school or any, any age part of school. You were never tempted to cheat if you knew that teacher was looking over your shoulder. Am I right? And I'm also sure that when you were teenagers that you were less affectionate with your date when your parents weren't around than when you were alone. Some of you guys are like, whoa. whoa." Hey, you guys have seen all these cameras at the uh, different intersections, you know, and, you know, everybody's watching, you know, Big Brother's watching us and writing us tickets and stuff like that. Well, there's a big controversy, and part of it is, uh, you know, uh, the, the rights of privacy and stuff like that going on with our politicians. But here's another thing that's going on with those cameras, and this was in the Braden Herald this past year. Uh, Mantee County right now is losing money on those cameras, and you know why? They were making huge revenue on the cameras when they first installed them. But now they're, they're, they pay a company to monitor and keep it, you know, uh, keep tabs on everything. But now what's happened is because we know people are watching how we drive, we have modified our driving. So guess what? We're not running red lights as much as we once were. So the government is making as much money. In other words, when people watch us, it's a motivation for us to walk in the right path. And God, what we need to remind ourselves is God is watching you. And he is saying, man, when you're tempted, I want to be there for you. I want to be a, your advisor. I want, you, I want to be your counselor. I want to give you a way out. So when I'm aware of God's presence, he helps me to maintain control. The, the presence of God helps me when I'm, I'm feeling lonely. It cheers me up. The presence of God helps me when I'm worried and, and, and helps me to calm down. But here's the deal. You've got to tune in to the presence of God. 
Well, how do you do that? If God is with us, how can we be with him? Well, I'm going to give you four very basic Bible truths. The first one is this. Connect with God through Jesus Christ. Invite Jesus in your life if you haven't done that. Because God is all around you. God is by you. And God wants to be within each and every one of us for a couple different reasons. First and foremost, he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to spend eternity with you. And he also wants you to be able to handle stress of this life because there's so much pressure in this life. And whenever people are under pressure, they always begin to to fill themselves with something. When you're feeling the squeeze from the outside, they're going to put something inside if they don't know Jesus to try to withstand the pressure coming from the outside. So it may be in a form of food or alcohol alcohol or drugs, but something to counter that pressure. Yet this is what the Bible says real clearly. Don't get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Instead of being filled with spirits, we need to be filled with the Spirit. And as you're filled with God's presence, as you're filled with His Spirit, it equalizes the pressure that you're feeling from the world and, and from situations and maybe from the devil. But it begins with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's the second thing. It's to learn to talk to God. I want you to watch this video about a guy trying to figure out how to pray when he was asked to pray for his church. And then I'll come back up. You know, prayer can be confusing, intimidating for people, just like that video demonstrated. So I just really want to make it as simple as possible this morning. Um, And I want to encourage you to pray to God and and just simply talk with him like you would talk with a friend. In fact, I love what David says in Psalms 54 too. Hear my prayer, O God. Listen to the words of my mouth. I just want to encourage just to talk to God. And I'll be honest with you, I used to feel guilty because I I know pastors that spent hours, you know, in in prayer. And uh, here I am a pastor, and I just can't do that. I'm just not wired for that. I got ADD. I have to have prayer lists. I've got to be really focused. And I've just learned to accept the way that God has created me. But here's what I've learned is I pray a lot during the day. I have an ongoing conversation with God, kind of like you have a conversation with with a friend on a text and kind of just give you a word picture. Um, I love the Cleveland Browns, even though they're not a good team, but my best friend's in Cleveland. And whenever there's a Cleveland Browns fan game on, I'm watching it, he's watching it, and we're texting each other. It's just kind of like we're in the same room. I mean, we're, we're complaining about the, you know, the plays and, you know, all that. And, you know, the, uh, you know, we're trying to be the quarterback and stuff like that. But it's just like having short spurts of communication with God. Just through the day. And, you know, when, when I'm meeting with someone, I'm asking God to give me wisdom for that situation. And, and just be asking God, God, give me strength right now, God. Help me to know what to say here. God, help me here. And, and it's just an ongoing communication with God. And you say, well, what do I talk, talk to God about? Well, Paul tells us in Philippians, Philippians 4, 6, says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Don't worry about anything, but he's saying, pray about everything. So what does that include? Well, if you're in school, man, pray that God would help you with the test. If you're having a situation at work, ask God to help you with that situation. Pray for that difficult relative that you have in your family. You say, well, I don't have any difficult relatives. Everybody has a difficult relative. Maybe if you don't have a difficult relative, you are that difficult relative, and you need to be praying for yourself, okay? Pray about your neighbor's cat, that that cat would run away, you know. Pray about your marriage if it's not doing well. Pray about everything. And then the scripture says you you just simply tell God your needs. You you bring him your needs, and then you thank him for what he's done. And verse 7 says this, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So how do I have a moment with God? Well, we talk with him, and here's the second thing. Listen to him. Listen to him. Deuteronomy 30, verse 20 tells us, listen to God's voice and hold fast to him, for the Lord is your life. Listen to God's voice. Now, I know people, even committed Christians, say, you know what? I've never heard the voice of God. I've always listened. I've always kind of listened for that Morgan Freeman type of voice coming on, and this is the Lord. I've never heard that. Well, I do believe that God can speak to you, in an audible voice because he's God. He can speak to us any way he wants. And there's times when God has spoken to me that's been louder than an audible voice. But God speaks to us in so many different ways. But I really believe that we need to listen 
more than talk when we're with God. And so how does God speak to us? Well, unquestionably, the best and most re- reliable way is through his word. You can hear his voice through his word. And you read his word, and he begins to, he'll begin to speak to you. I promise you, as you make that a part of your daily life, God will speak to you through his word. And I don't know if, how many years... I've been doing this, but I read the Bible through every single year. And I, I usually use a different translation every year just to kind of keep it fresh. I personally use Bible uh, Gateway. You can use that. There's U, U version. And I read through uh, uh, the Bible again every year. And I can't tell you how many times I'm facing a situation. And that morning I, I read, you know, I read something that applied to that situation. Or I read something this morning and, uh, about uh, a principle of God, and I'm faced with that later on in the week. And, and God just sets you up by speaking to you through the Word. And He can speak to you through other people, through family members, small group leaders, pastors, good friends. God can speak to you through a song, through circumstances. God can speak to you through His Spirit. If you're a Christian, you're spiritually connected with God, and His Spirit somehow internally speaks to you. He gives you prompting. He guides you, and and you just need to learn to recognize His voice, the voice of the Spirit. Now, some of you say, well, you know, that's kind of creepy, you know, when you're talking like that. I don't don't think I've ever heard the voice of God. I'll give you something very simple to do today. You can do it today, and you can hear the voice of God. And you say, man, I don't know if I should run out of this place or not, but I'm just just telling you, this is something very simple. And you simply get before God, get a piece of paper, get a pen out, and just ask God, pray, and just say, God, who do you want me to pray for today? And then you shut up. And see what God won't put on your heart, uh, uh, faces of people that God will put in your mind, and then write out those names. If you want to take it to the next level, then God, what do you want me to pray about with these people? Then if you want to take it to a next level, you contact those people through text or email or call them and just say, you know what, God's placed you on my heart. I just want to let you know I'm praying for you. And watch how often people want to say, man, how did you know that? And all of a sudden, you're beginning to cultivate uh, an ear to hear the voice of God. And all of a sudden, you're, you're going through your day, and you're, you're praying, and you're asking God for direction, and you're learning to hear his voice. And the longer you walk with God, the more you're going to be able to realize that he is with you and that you don't just simply talk with him, but you listen to him as well. And he will give you guidance. He will give you direction. I love this verse in Isaiah 30, verse 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I want to read that again. <clears throat> Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Man, God wants to speak to every single one of us, but we need to be listening. The Bible says God orders the steps of the righteous. He orders the steps of the righteous, but for us to hear his orders, we need to be listening. So here's the last one. Learn to praise him. Develop the habit of praise. And praise means to thank God for, for who he is, for what he's done in our life. And Psalms 100 verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. And, and nothing will help you become aware of the presence of God more than learning to develop praise. And uh, it'll help you tune into his presence and, and really understanding that God is with you. And, you know, sometimes we sense his presence in a greater fashion than others. But what we need to understand is no matter where we are, whether we're at work or, or uh, on a job or what, wherever, God is with us. He's absolutely everywhere. And if he's everywhere, that means that he can, um, uh, you know, we can praise him anytime. And we can experience what we experienced here this morning. You can experience that when you are driving, going to school, when you're at work. And you can have that same feeling that God is with you because God is everywhere. And a whole new life is about to open up to you if you can begin to, to take these, uh, uh, <clears throat> these simple truths and apply it to your life, it's going to make a huge difference in your life. Proverbs 8.20 says this, Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day. Imagine that. Day after day, filled with delight, rejoicing always in the presence of God. And, and <clears throat> what, if you say, what if you could say that? You know, I was filled with delight day by day as I've been rejoicing with God. And how do you have a moment with God? 
Well, you first off, you have a moment with God. If you don't know God, you don't have a relationship with him, you invite Jesus Christ to come into your life. Then you begin to talk with him like you would talk with a friend. Then you begin to listen to him like you would listen to a friend, but understand he is all wise, and he has your best interest in mind. And then I begin to praise him. I begin to thank him for who he is and for what he's done in my life. I ran across this last week as I was preparing for this message. If you have a moment with God, that means you can have a minute with God. If you have a minute with God, you can have an hour with God. If you have an hour with God, you can have a day with God. If you have a day with God, you can have a week with God. If you have a week with God, you can have a month with God. If you have a month with God, you can have a year with God. If you have a year with God, you can have a life with God. Day by day, enjoying his presence, rejoicing always. Why? Because he's with you. He's with me. Because he loves you, and he's not just for you. He's with you. And Paul says this, that nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you, says my Lord. And so God's saying, you know what? You don't have to fear anything because I'm with you. And I'm a lot tougher than the, the, the dude in Cleveland by the name of Mad Dog, okay? He's with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you.